Welcome to the Space Coast Real Estate Show. This is Jesse Hall. I'm a local agent with EXP Realty, and with me in the studio is John Michelli. John Michelli, loanappliapproved.com. And also Michelle Move Carpenter. Inspiring home staging and redesign. That's right. So John and Michelle continue to uh, join me on our very first 2022 episode. That's right. Yes. The beginning of a year and end of an era. Right. Is that an era? <laughs> you know what the end of the era is? No. Tom Brady, he's gone. Oh. <laughs> did he officially announce? He did. Oh, yeah. He did. I missed it. Oh well. But, but the good news I is knew. we have the 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 goat now as yes. a resident of Florida. So all the more reason for you to come join us here in Florida as well, for all of those out of state listeners. Amen to that. Yeah. So in 2022, um, man, lot, lots of talk already. The market's still bustling. Everybody thought there was going to be a drop off. Everybody thought yep. there was going to be some ex- explosive uh, kind of uh, news or transgression or, or uh, you know something that's going to shake up and shatter the uh, the industry. But so far, not a whole lot. Yeah, it's a busy, busy, busy. You know, uh, the, the 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 biggest talk I think that anybody has is uh, virtual real estate. Mm-hmm. So you know, with the with the metaverse and everything else, there's a lot of things going on there yeah. where people get own like virtual plots of land and build virtual. It's like monopoly. You know, you, you buy hotels on it. And the whole thing. I mean, it's it's pretty fascinating. Uh, but beyond that, 2022 hasn't really given us any indicator as to what we could expect for the rest of the year. So, well, I'll tell you one thing. What's your predictions? Um, the mortgage-backed security bond mm-hmm. is really really tanking. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it's reacting to um, inflation mm-hmm. and all kinds of other factors. So that I think the low historical low rate train is pulling into the station. Is that right? And we can expect to see some rising rates over the next few months. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult for buyers to get into the market, most likely. Yeah, spendability will go down as rates go up. Mm-hmm. The Fed uh, announced that they're going to start tapering their purchases of mortgage-backed security bonds which have been stabilizing the rates throughout the pandemic. So mm-hmm. now it's going to, with that news and with the inflation, there it's already starting. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Michelle, what do you think is going to happen this year? Well, I kind of piggyback off of what John said with the interest rates. We see that, yeah. you know, we've seen that at the end of the year, 2021, which for Jesse and I, with interest, I mean, with the interest rates going up, that's hopefully going to increase the number of homes on the market. Yeah, right well, now the know. inventory is still way, way <laughs> down. Inventory is so very low, so I don't know. There's yeah. tons uh, of buyers looking, I, salivating. I, I, yeah, I still think it's it's not going to hurt uh, home appreciation. No, nope. No. I don't think there's going to be less buyers in the market. Maybe, there's maybe more buyers, still. maybe with buyers who who are ca- uh, counting on financing program. But what we're seeing here in Florida is a lot of people coming in with cash. They're selling their homes mm-hmm. up north and are coming here and. And uh, they don't need financing, no. so to speak, you know. So, so that's helpful. Well, it's not hope- helpful for people like no, John in no. the lending space. <laughs> Big topic so far this year is appraisal gaps. How do you deal mm-hmm. with appraisal oh, yeah. gaps? You know, you have to come in with cash to yep. make up the gap, and that's right. a real. Let's talk about that real quick for, 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 for right people now. who understand the concept. When there's a purchase, okay, when when so, when when somebody gets under contract and they have a certain amount, let's just say five hundred for easy, you know. Um, and that's kind of like almost a medium house price down here in, in Florida, just about. So you're at 500, and then the appraisal comes at 480. Who makes up that 20,000 difference? Because the bank's not going to give more than the appraised value. Right. So, so here's how it works. Right. <clears throat> you have the appraised value, and then whatever product in you have a five percent. Let's say uh, on a conventional loan, you have a five percent in. So you take that appraised value. You have to come to table with that mm. five. And then whatever the gap is, you right. add to the five percent. So, you know, it could be substantial. Well, it could be the seller you either having to reduce the purchase price mm-hmm. and come down, which is not happening in this market. Most likely not. So that means the buyer has to f- somehow find that that cash to come mm-hmm. up and meet that that mm-hmm. value. Or if you were putting twenty percent down and you know trying to avoid PMI and. Right. You know, you have that big down payment, right. but if there is a, let's say, a twenty thousand um, dollar gap, so now you're short to your twenty percent by twenty thousand. You have mm. to come up with the additional to, to reach back to that twenty thousand right. to get 
rid of your PMI. Right. And that's, an, that's, that's another big thing. And, and yeah. by the way, if, uh, if you haven't spoken with John yet and gotten refinanced and got rid of that PMI, because PMI is a funny thing. If you refinance and don't specifically refinance to have that PMI drop off, it'll probably still be there. Yep. So it's a very, once you get that into a, a mortgage or, or a lending uh, vehicle with a PMI, it's, sometimes it's tricky to get that off. You have well, to be very specific. Well, an FHA loan, it never comes off. Exactly. The only way to get rid of it is to refinance. Right. In a conventional loan, it'll drop off after 10 years, and that's um, the amount of time it takes you to get from, you know, your your 95% mm-hmm. LTV down to your 80% LTV right. uh, loan to value. Mm-hmm. So um, once that occurs, it automatically comes up. But with the way houses are appreciating, you do a couple of um, renovation products, a bathroom or a kitchen right. or something, you could probably get a bpo and a and a, it has to be more than 12 months so after the first year of your mortgage mm-hmm. um you could get your house appraised or get a bpo from a broker and get that removed that's actually a really good uh yeah. service do you, i just do had you, a young lady do that who bought a condo in mm-hmm. uh in coco beach that's wise. last last year she called me up right on the year mm-hmm. she's like i redid the kitchen and i think these con up and she got a bpo she was under 80 percent and now that useless payment is gone. Awesome. One hundred and eighty dollars nice. a month. Back it adds her, up. Back in her pocket. Very, yeah. Yeah, awesome. that's almost twenty four hundred a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 substantial. That's her homeowner's insurance. Right. Exactly. Right. So with the down payment you were talking about, um, in one of the classes that I teach for the staging, um, for for the agents for the CE credits, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. In that class, we talk about a lot of your buyer pool is first time home buyers that younger generation and they buy typically a lot of homes that are either new or rentally, recently renovated because they don't have the money, the disposable income for some of those renovations or even your elderly in that case too mm-hmm. because of that they don't want to have to worry about the maintenance the upkeep in their yeah. their elderly you know years so are you seeing that kind of thing with the mortgages with well um, i think everybody wants to go into a turnkey house or they well, don't right, have to right. mess with but nothing, as far as like people our age it's a little bit easier for us to take care yeah. of yeah We've been doing but. a lot of renovation loans. I have two renovation loans, and I and have mine. <laughs> in yours, and I have uh, a couple Mine's of two. Mine's fine kind though. <laughs> I have a couple of two hundred three k loans going yeah. on right now. Yeah. So yeah, th- it's so that's another good option for those that. I mean, I think all of the turnkey houses have been bought up. Right so now, you really, you know, right. you got to be looking at a some kind of renovation or well, some kind of repair. Well, and if you can't repair. afford that higher price point, and you need yeah. something that's you know at a modest price range for your proper you know one to of get my, into it yeah one of my borrowers just went into a house and um the house is beautiful everything looks fantastic looks great inside and uh lo and behold there's a collapsing <gasps> cast iron pipe underneath oh. the slab which is a That's expensive pretty. repair We're looking at about yeah. 30 grand to repair that bad right. boy so right <laughs> now we're into negotiations and it looks like they're going to be able to get the sales price lowered but you know they don't have the 30 grand so we're flopping mm-hmm. it over to a two oh um 3k loan a renovation loan and uh looks like we're gonna make the deal happen nice good get her fixed up and yeah. they'll be John's good to go for quite some time options for those kind of improvements and or if your necessary. roof's caving in my roof's caving <laughs> in <laughs> ceiling's falling in <laughs> you know they have the joke about you know the electrician or the plumbers houses needing to be the ones that have electric problems or plumbing problems yeah stagers houses are not always beautiful <laughs> <laughs> it will be it will very be. soon yes for sure well you mentioned Thanks to john you mentioned something that that we, we want to go over because on, on today's episode we want to as we start the beginning of uh 2022 here in uh february already we have some things that homeowners and uh, individuals need to be looking at Mm-hmm. You know, and as far as uh, before they either get into talking about getting uh, qualified for a mortgage or even now that maybe they're in their home for the first year, uh, what are some things that they, they should be looking at? What sh- should, uh, should they be uh, looking to maybe renegotiate? So let's talk about some of those uh, first things. I know you mentioned uh, homeowner's insurance. Yeah. Now, that's something I think we, we mentioned in our previous episode that, you know, anything that you're paying an annual for you should shop it mm-hmm. yep. instead of just rolling into a new policy every year. Oh, then this goes yep. for auto and home yeah. and even life Health. and whatever else, yeah. you know? So if you don't shop your homeowner's insurance annually, mm-hmm. 
guaranteed your rate is going to creep up on you, creep up on you. You don't think about it. It's in your escrow. It automatically gets paid. And then you're like, hmm, I have a fixed rate mortgage. How come my payment's going up every year? Right. Well, it's because your taxes and your insurance are going up every year. So I would look at it. And usually a lot of times you can, um, you know, find a competitive offer that beat what you got and make up that escrow deficit. Yeah. It's a smart thing to do. Right. So I'm not sure if we have anybody that we would endorse as far as uh, uh, an insurance company, uh, we certainly have our favorites. I know I have mine that I, yeah. you know, will will refer out to uh, when people get that home because when you buy a home, it's like congratulations. But now here's all the extra stuff. You know, here's yeah. all the, the, you know, the service providers you need. You know, here's a, uh, you know, your your Wi-Fi and here's your your landscaping and here's your pool company and you you need all these contractors to kind of come in and, and set up uh, uh, accounts with. You. You. Yep. And that's like the first thing, right? Yep. I mean, you need water, you got mm-hmm. FPL, you got, you know, there are some things you, you need right away. Yep. Some things, maybe not so much, maybe, you know, a little bit later, but homeless insurance, I mean, as soon as you got, you close, you, you should can. you should be under a policy. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, in there, and checking it. Yeah. Say, don't you have to have proof of insurance that before you close? Yeah. When you, you finance, yeah. Yeah. When you finance. So, and, yeah. That, and that'll be paid for a whole year at Up closing. Front, so, right. you know, you got 12 months to, you know, look at it and then see if there's a better policy towards the end of that year. The other thing you can't really control too much is the homeowner's um, property taxes. Right. Um, But the best way you can mitigate that is to file for homestead exemption. Mm -hmm. Right. It puts a 3% cap on how much they can raise the appraised value of your house. Yeah. Go back to insurance for a second. Something I just thought of. We were talking about the home values increasing. Right. You need to make sure that your homeowner's policy is covered the value of your property and your yep. home so that you know as a home value increases you need to make sure that your property insurance you're increasing that value too because Absolutely. if re- replacement cost of damage or even if you know the whole house it's going to cost more to replace that home. excellent point so mm. yeah so as you're shopping around check that out too for sure well, that's why it's always important just to consult with your professional and your insurance provider should really be able to to help you out not only just bundling and saving with your car auto boat rv mm-hmm. and whatever else you know you need insured uh so always shop for bundled rates and i would say uh yeah a minimum of uh annually you know sometimes it's even it's even wise just to give a call you know six months into your policy and be like how, how are we looking you know do i am i missing any coverage you know especially like you know hurricane season coming up you know is there anything that i need to know about that's mm-hmm. not covered or maybe you know that maybe should be covered yeah check your deductibles mm-hmm. yep you know because you could always you could always you know it, it, they may not it, it's something you know like anything else in life right not everybody's going to look through all of their clientele and and see exactly Okay, well, you know the Millers are able to save a little bit if they if they give me fifty more uh, dollars a month, I could reduce that ten thousand deductible to five thousand dollars. You know, so sometimes you have to be proactive as a homeowner. Be like, listen, is there anything I could do to pay down my deductible right. or, or or do something else? You know, yeah. is, what are my options? Maybe your fifteen year old uh, became a sixteen year old and now they have a car and now you have to ah. add a vehicle, ah. right? And so <laughs> just happened to me. Yeah, and so that's another thing that, you know that you may want to consult with. The, so so your insurance persons. Just yeah. like your, just like your tax and, and uh, professionals, uh, your, your CPA. These are all people that you kind of want to stay in touch with, mm-hmm. yeah. Because they, they they're they're working hard, but you're not the only one they're working for. Right. So uh, it's up Especially to you in to tax season like yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, your insurance too, improvements. You know, mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to have a new roof, so that may actually help my homeowner's insurance go down. Absolutely, yeah, it sure so, will. You know, if you've made changed out you know impact rated you know hurricane rated in, uh windows impact rated windows then that could affect your insurance too so Absolutely. there could be things that you could do to help that you've done improvements to your home right that could help lower your rate too i put a metal 100%. roof on my old house and it uh went down eleven hundred dollars wow a year. nice it was a that's big, valuable yeah it was very valuable yeah yep so these are all again little things like that. Have the right questions. Mm-hmm. Um, again, have a re- have a good relationship with your with your agent. You mm-hmm. know, your insurance agent should really be a buddy, right. because you know if 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 you can be proactive and, and, and treat them well and, and keep and stay top of mind. Uh, you know, send them a nice card or, or something else. Uh, 
listen, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll probably be more likely to go to bat for you yeah. and, and find things. Um, take care of you. Exactly. You know, so you, you won't be the, the, the bottom of the stack. You know, you'll be constantly, you know, the top of the, top of the stack, top of mind. Greasy wheel gets, well, noisy wheel gets a, the grease, right? Squeaky wheel That's gets right. the grease. It's the old cliche, uh, if I could spit it out properly. <laughs> so be a squeaky wheel. It's no problem. Call, call these people. Call their CPA. You know, l- let them know that uh, your, your, your taxes are coming up and, and we could segue into, into taxes. So this, mm-hmm. this time of the season, I've already gotten my 1099. You know, I'm getting all those things from, from all my, uh, uh, you know, people that I deal with, you know, who I'm a vendor for. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, if you don't have a relationship with a CPA, I would I would strongly do that because you just don't want to go to an HR block, you know, one of these seasonal kind of places that just open their doors, you know, between uh, February and, and April, and, you know, they're going to be slammed. And, they're again, they don't really know your case. They don't know really what, what they're fighting for. They're just they're just helping you submit it to say, so you're compliant. Right. But they're probably not finding you the right, de- like, write-offs. They're not finding you the right deductions. They're probably not going any further than they are challenged to, right? Because... Yep. Again, build that relationship. That way they care, and that way you'll get the best service possible Absolutely. versus somebody who's just another, you know, ticketed customer that, that that's walking in, you know, looking for uh, just a, a simple file. E-filing, wouldn't really recommend that because, once again, depending on your deductions, because you could write off as a property owner tons of stuff. Yeah, in the can. pandemic, in 21, how much time did you spend telecommuting from your house? You could write off your electric bill a portion of your square footage from your taxes and insurance, and so much more. Yeah. But you have to talk to your tax professional and let them know. I had a home office last year. That's a big deduction. There's yeah. so many things that you can write off. Uh, same thing with vehicle you know expenses. That you can write, so whatever your standard rent mm-hmm. is of, of your yep. home that you own, you can write off 14 days of that amount of rent daily rent like in an airbnb with no questions asked it could be a big number that's a nice little trick people don't know about that no so 14 days if you spent 14 days in an airbnb working nope no nope. so you own a house right if your house was rented on airbnb for you know 800 dollars a day right 800 times 14 instant deduction okay right. but you have to rent your house out as an airbnb Okay. No questions asked. Okay. So no proof of nope. being rented. Nothing. Oh. Just make up a number, multiply by fourteen. Well, it's got to be market, you know. It's got to be market, right? Yeah. So right. A th- so a three two on let's say uh, the Barrier Island, you know, in yep. uh, Indy Atlantic. Easily eight hundred a day. Eight hundred a day, exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, that's that could be significant. Yeah. Sure can. You know. Uh, also, make sure that you uh, throughout the year. Uh, for all those who uh, feel like they want to uh, participate in, like, say, giving donations or anything else, make sure you're getting those uh, certificates from that nonprofit because yeah. that's what they do. You know, if you get $800,000, $20,000, make sure you have that certificate I from them. I donated a boat, you know, cars for kids. Yes. One 800 cars for <laughs> kids. Way. So you did that? I did that, How yes. much How much of value did they give you? Uh, it was an old boat. It was my old yellow beater boat that yeah. I've had for 25 years. It was a 1977 Hydrostream Viper that was right. very dangerous. It was super fast. And um, I got uh, $2,800 for it. There you go. Because I promised my wife I wouldn't have two boats at the same time. So I had to get rid of one of them to get the other one. So you donate it, got the $2,800. Yep. yep. And it it all adds up, folks. You know, all all these deductions, all of these write offs, um, it's just, it's, it's smart. But again, we are not tax professionals. So full disclosure, uh, consult with the CPA and and do it, and do it correctly. But yeah. I would I would say just like an insurance agent, get a CPA, get somebody who's with you year round, looking at your your books. Um, if you don't have a bookkeeper, you know maybe you're keeping you know uh, QuickBooks at home, but you know send them those quarterly. So you know let let them make make sure that they are filing for you, especially as a business owner. You know yeah. you have, you, have, you may be filing four times a year, every quarter. So anyway, consult with that tax professional. But right now, all we can think about is getting all those papers, all those receipts, all those expenses that you put into your home and certainly do that. If you can, if you're trying to write off, 
your tax professionals, guidance. you know, sp- specific guidance, right? They're going to say, well, listen, you could, get, you know, give me all of your electric and, and, and water bills and Wi-Fi and phone bills, like all those things that you're doing business with from home. Now you could write off. Yeah. So make sure you and take advantage of that. Also, do you remember when you make a donation like that, that's coming directly off your taxable income. So I got a $2,500 you know, deduction, but mm-hmm. if you gross that up, you're up in the three thousands in real, mm-hmm. real right. dollars. So right. don't forget that a dollar saved is not a dollar earned. Right. It's more mm-hmm. because you don't pay taxes yeah. on it. That's right. Don't and forget And just when you're that. looking for a CPA, you just and then I've recently <clears throat> switched to one. Make mm-hmm. sure that you find an agent or a CPA um, that is good. You know, look, we're all business owners, right. so find somebody that's knowledgeable in business, small businesses, right. versus you know just personal yeah. individual taxes. You'll learn a lot. So, yeah, mm-hmm. and that way they can service you better too exactly just a good little no note there yeah and uh and certainly you can contact any of us i know have i have my favorite cpas that that i refer out Mm -hmm. i got some uh, good ones too yeah exactly so we're all very knowledgeable so you know throughout today's episode if 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 we're you know making sense and you're like i I need to do that and uh but i don't know anybody i'm I'm new in town because i know we're speaking to a lot of new people who have Mm -hmm. just uh, transplanted here on, on the space coast from from elsewhere so you may not have the right uh, guidance, you know, a, yeah. a, a, an insurance agent in New York or, or California is going to be right. different than in, they're, pr- they're probably not going to know the state laws and, mm-hmm. and so forth. So and the same thing goes with with tax laws from state to state. So make sure you find a local uh, professional and. Um, yeah. And oh, uh, and also in get, December, get I had the um, I had the wealth building um, seminar for realtors at the yeah. board of real um, the board of association of realtors here in. Um, in Brevard County at Space Coast and yep. um, that had a very good response and good. Um, people were definitely having an ear yeah. open mm-hmm. there you go. and um, I have access to that gentleman as well he'll uh, be good. happy to answer any questions for all our realtor friends out there perhaps nice. Uh, nice. a future guest on the show yeah I was oh, just talking to him again. about that on the way here as a cool. matter of fact maybe we could zoom meet him zoom meeting him well, in one day well we uh, we Skype Skype. Or Skype, yeah. yeah. You could Skype them in to the studio. Uh, and Yeah, we, we'd, we'd love to have anybody that could help our audience, uh, you know, m- make some good sound uh, plays, you know, because right. yeah. we, we, we want everybody to, to win here on the Space Coast. We want everybody to um, enjoy their, you know, more of their money and not have to give it to, you know, all these different things. So, uh, yeah, one thing that, and I'm not sure if it's unique to, to Florida, but certainly the homestead exemption. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. And, and be and be- before we get too much into it, um, it there's a little bit of urgency. Mm. Yep. Okay. Because it, uh, it 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 expires in order to qualify for for this year. So you've had correct? to have owned your house on January first. So if you bought it on, if you closed on December thirty first or any time before that, right. In that calendar year, you qualify for this year's homestead exemption, and then you have until March first to file. So, time's a ticking. Yeah, I got about three weeks. Yep. To figure that out. Now, do so. you have to refile that every year? Or is it automatic nope. from year to year? Once you do it, you're done. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the only thing that I would say, if you if you're going to revisit that, it, I think they're you're allowed to add, add a spouse after a year, if I'm not mis- mistaken, because I've I've seen where you could take two homestead exemptions out one for you and one for your spouse mm. if i'm mistaken mm. and then if you're like a veteran uh i think that's another exemption mm-hmm. well if you have a disability yeah mm-hmm. if you're a disabled vet mm-hmm. um but I, i've known that there's uh there's also one i think if you're uh, uh sight impaired mm-hmm. and um yeah i think that's it the yeah. veterans but i think i think um another so another special one for widows or widowers, oh, yep. you know. So I think you're able to add. Maybe that's what I, I remember. Yeah. So if if you're if you're a couple, it's fifty thousand. But if you lose a spouse, you well, get <coughs> I don't think it's spouse because it's an ad valorem on the property value itself. Mm. So if you're on the deed, you're on the homestead exemption. Right. And also, there's portability too. So remember that if you move, you can take a portion of your exemption with you to your new property. Always wise. A lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. Don't know about that yeah. right. portability. It it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 remarkable. So, and that's listen, people having their homes appreciate. I think uh, there was some in our market that were up to twenty percent year yep. over year. Right. Not every product, 
but some products mm -hmm. uh, had some really great appreciation. But it's not always great because, for instance, if you have paid your home off, for instance, mm -hmm. and the only thing you're responsible for is your homeowner's insurance and your uh, taxes, well, now that tax bill is going to go up because it's all marked to the value of your home. Isn't that correct? So there's an assessed value by the property appraiser's office, and right. your all your taxes are based on that number. Even if you pay off your house, it it doesn't change that. You still have to pay the taxes, and if it's homesteaded, right. the most they can raise your assessed value is three percent per year, up or down. Mm -hmm. So it works if it, in a falling market against you, but it works in a in an appreciating market for you. Right. And that's what we're dealing with now. So <coughs> I would say take a look at that. Uh, Dana is our property appraiser uh, office. Yep. Um, and she is. She Dana is, Blickley, right? Yep. And she, she's great. She's been in the studio before on, uh, on other previous shows. And, um, and you know, maybe, maybe we need to, to bring her in here uh, towards uh, the end of uh, next year. Yeah. You know, so we sh she could really give us the, the one over on, on how to do the homestead the best way possible. Yeah. But Absolutely. I know she has a great website, and you go to BCP. AO.us. A yep, dot .us. Yeah. That's a hard one to spit out. But it's a uh, Brevard County Property yeah, Appraiser. Yeah, you can just Google that. Yeah. It's a lot easier. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but Brevard County Property But then appraiser. from from there on Google. that website, you can you could get exemptions, you could, you know, um, yeah. it, it, gives, it gives you all there's, the tools on how to do it. It's yep. real easy, but you just have to do it before March 1. There's even a portability calculator on there. Mhm. Mm yeah, so lots of cool resource, resources here sometimes. in Brevard County. When people ask me about portability, I go oh, yeah. and, and I put the numbers in there and say, yeah, hey, you can take this with you. I can't tell you how many how many uh, days a year I'm on that site. I me mean, too, every day almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, I lost count, but it's a great resource, and that, that website, they always keep it um, yeah. looking nice and flashy with all these cool tools. They're always adding stuff to it. That's so my second tab, my bookmark exactly. tab. It's the second one I click on it every single day. Yep, I have the I have the I have the four main ones: Flex, that one, yep. and then my CRM and and, and, and RPR. Yep, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yep, you must be in the industry. Oh yeah, that's funny. Uh, so yeah, so enough about homestead exemption. I think we learned some good things now. Yeah, uh, let's move on to uh, for those uh, agents who are maybe new into the industry. Uh, and of course, the seasoned agents, you know, the, the renewal season's up. I think this is my year. Uh, it rotates for everybody, but it's usually every two years. Mm -hmm. And yep. I know Michelle's going to um, mention that she has a class that you offer to help those, those uh, meet those conditions. I think it's 14 CEUs. Three. My no, class. 14 well, total? Yeah. 14 total. You need 14 right. to renew. Three law. Yeah, three law and ethics. And then. Right. And then I offer um, three for staging. You become a, a designated staging cer certified staging advocate. Very for cool. For three credits hours. So yeah. And how how often do you do that class? <laughs> it varies. Um, I don't offer it just individually through me. Typically, right. I offer it either through the association or through individual brokerage offices. Mm -hmm. So we just recently had one at Keller Williams, and mm -hmm. then we're going to be doing one at Keller Williams. At the beginning of March, I've got to get that scheduled um, virtually through Zoom. Cool. And so, if anybody has you know any off um, brokerages where they would like to offer that, we can certainly do that. Yeah. So attention brokers in house or that makes sense. Zoom. So it's yeah, it's great. Not only do you get the three hour CE credit, you get the designation that you can use on any of your marketing because clients are looking for agents that you know promote and advocate for staging. Right. So I dig it. It's a good marketing. And I dig tool. it too. Yeah. I'm going to take that class. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> cool. <laughs> And so that's that's offered, but also the uh, the association has many other CEs oh, yeah, that, that you could go Lots. and find out. And uh, I think they just offered their G GRI program, the the three uh, GRI series, and uh, which is always really valuable. If yeah, you do I it. have my GRI, and yep. I took that took a long time, but and I had to go all over the state to get it because mm -hmm. they only offer some of the series in certain locations, and I had to chase it down in Tampa and Must Orlando. Must travel to and, get certification. <laughs> yeah, I, I was all over the state. That's not, that's I wanted it yeah. now, so I, I traveled to that's get good. the fastest. And that's not the easiest possible. one as well. It, it's it's a lot of classroom hours, yeah, seven. and and then you also have to achieve the second and third one within a, a window of time. Yeah. So as soon as you got you, you finished the, the first GRI course, you have to then 
uh, source, you know, and, and it may include traveling because you have that you have a short window to complete them all. It's seven uh, week long courses. Yeah. So that's a long journey. Yeah, it's a long journey, but it's it's valuable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, I know this this year my designation that that I'd like to get um, will be my CIPS because I've uh, I've gotten the classes and I just have to get the designation. So that's going to help me with being a certified international, international. property specialist. That's yeah. right. Nice. Because we, uh, we EXP, big news today, we are officially in Dominican Republic. Ah. We're opening in Greece and New Zealand, I think, Ooh. this year as I'm well. I'm trying so. to get licensed in PR. There's a big boon happening there. Mm-hmm. I bet. I bet Puerto, so Puerto Rico. Um, I'm working on that be- right now. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, I wish the Bahamas had something regulatory that that w- that would be easy to to do. I think PR is ahead of them, and because yeah. it is, is similar to, to Florida, territory. right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, getting getting internationally licensed that's a whole new thing. But at least if I get the designation to help international buyers and sellers, then of course that's that's what I like to do as well. So I'll travel to stage. You will. Yeah. Let's go stage Bahamas. Let's go. Why not? Let's do it. No, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to sell Bahamas. You know, because F- Florida, it's like we don't have neighboring states that are close. No, not really. You know, I mean, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi share a border, but, but they're, they're too far from here. But that's yeah, they're eight hours away. Yeah. Uh, whereas you know the Bahamas, I mean, it's I could neighbor. I can yeah, get there in my boat the, and faster than I can get to precisely. Jacksonville. <laughs> exactly. I could probably sail faster to to the bahamas than mobile alabama or or you know somewhere oh, yeah. in Definitely mississippi there. so you know let's um you know and people are people are going to these places they're they're island hopping all the time mm-hmm. you know so why wouldn't you want you know a property maybe in some luxurious island somewhere in, in the caribbean you know that's right so uh yeah anyway uh we Especially. digress so what else is uh what else could we share with with, with our fine folks oh yeah um Special announcement, or, or did we, do we clarify all of our um, topics du jour? I think we did. I, uh, I think well, we, there was one more that we talked about, possibly like mm-hmm. putting away from the holiday decor and getting uh, that organized. Yeah. And you know, if you've got things, I don't know. If I am I the only one that still has my Christmas tree up? <laughs> Please tell me. You oh, don't. No, I burned I do. mine a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, no, no we don't have I like real, it. We Christmas don't get real year round. It, it must anyway. be artificial. It is, of okay, course. Okay. But you know, I mean, I, I was going to say like all. All of the... Uh, the live ones, no. Yeah, we have too many the, allergies for the live is ones. Is that oh, just because you can't let the holidays go, or are you just Time, it got away from you? I just <laughs> like it. I mean, we still plug it in and turn the lights on and everything. <laughs> I just like Christmas, too. <laughs> well, but, um, and I don't out. get to enjoy it so much before the holidays because I'm so busy. And now after the holidays, you know, like especially when... And I, we, st- you know. we do have Florida snow right now. Exactly. Which exactly. is cold rain. Cold rain. <laughs> and those little flowers that grow in the fly. But, you know, as you're putting things away, not just the holiday decor, and stuff but thinking ahead into the spring right. for spring cleaning and spring maintenance repairs yep. so just start taking a look around your home um, if you're looking to potentially sell in the spring or even not just start looking at some of those things that need to be addressed um, and as the weather starts to improve then those would be things on your your to-do list to kind of maintenance the home and, and keep it in good good condition so well and that's a, that's a valid reminder as well to maybe uh, get into those storage units mm-hmm. and uh, clean them out. So before you just shove all the Christmas stuff <laughs> oh. at, at the front of the the, the the unit or or the the very front of the attic, you, could save you know, space a lot of money. You know, maybe you could you know look at some of the things that are behind all those winter belongings and uh, and, and decide whether or not to keep them. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, some people are paying for storage for stuff they will never use again. I and storage um, is expensive. My wife has a storage facility that has a bunch of stuff in it and I've just been thinking about that. I need to go get rid of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, ho- house cleaning is more than just your house. It's mm-hmm. it's it's the attic, it's yeah. the basement, it's a garage, it's Declutter. you know, the yep. the shed, you Every know, space whatever. you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, cuz you just you just never know. I mean, even your kids' closets, you probably go in there. I heard a horror story. <laughs> Somebody found like some rotten food. They couldn't oh. they couldn't find an odor. You know, and and they finally cleaned, and they were moving some toys, and lo and behold, it was like some old like hot pocket or something the kid left, <laughs> and it was a, it was a science project. It was like all uh, kinds of growth, and uh, yeah, and Anthony, if you're listening, right. <laughs> don't even think about it. <laughs> so, because because spring's right around the corner, and uh, it's you know now now's the time 
uh, before you you know do those deep cleanings and and you're you're messing in the attic or or your you know your storage unit. Um, we'll get rid of that stuff and deep. May, maybe yeah, donate maybe. it and get that tax write off. Yeah. So. The tax write off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a beautiful uh, charity that I mean we have several really good right. charities. Uh, you have Restore the, that benefits uh, Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, one of my favorites is the Lamb Shop, which is uh, benefits the Haven for Children. Mm-hmm. And other people probably would like to use that stuff, but right. if absolutely if you lost weight and you're not gonna you know if you have that that it, that big oversized jacket that doesn't that you're never going to wear again give it give it away no so since then hold, hold on to it mm-hmm. or if you have a ton of extra stuff maybe consider having an estate sale it's yes very freeing and i have I say from my own experience i have some really good get a fistful of cash sale. yep and all your stuff is gone you don't mm-hmm. have to move it you don't have to look at it it's not there it's just poof yeah you know, it's, it's very gone. smart and it, it's in you just you don't use uh, estate sales just for uh, getting rid of property. Like you could yeah. just, you could literally do it at any time you're living there. Yep. And most of these estate professionals will bring in qualified buyers to come in. They'll yeah. gonna, they're going to they negotiate advertise. really good. You know, they're going to give really competitive offers for your stuff. They're not just going to come in like a garage sale and where people just, you know, they're going to, Bust out their 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 coin jar I and try to give my... to try to get you a, a nickel for every one of your valuables, you know. So the, the estate sales uh, attract a different they crowd. Do. I was gonna throw away my. I had spices that were in my pantry for <laughs> years. Spices? Yeah. I was like, I'll just throw all this stuff out, and they were like, No, 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 no. People buy that. I'm like, Seriously? Well, if it expires. Sure enough. I was gonna say they, bought, they sold it all. Have an expiration wow. date. Sold it all. <laughs> okay. It was all gone. Well, I mean, who knew? I'm not going to judge. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess some spice is better than none at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I suppose if it's a powdered form. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I guess it could they don't potentially become, expire. Yeah, it's they don't dry. become toxic. They usually just lose their flavor. Right. From yeah. my oh, nutritional side oh, of life. Oh, 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 over, over time. And maybe they're like a fine wine. They yeah, get they, better yeah I don't think garlic powder is going to get any better. <laughs> I think I think garlic powder <laughs> is is best is fresh. <laughs> yeah. It's so going downhill. Yeah, and let's be honest. I mean, to replace salt, pepper, and and some other spices. But that's a valid point because there are people who I can't tell you they will hold on to that old bottle of you know uh, hot sauce or whatever else that they haven't used. They got it three Chris. They'll tell you exactly when they got it too. <laughs> Like, oh, my brother brought it over here. He was visiting. He loves hot sauce. Got this thing. We're not going to use it because none of us like spicy food. But why do we keep it? Well, maybe my brother's going to show up again. I'm like, I'm sure he's going to bring a fresh bottle if he shows up again. Yeah. Like, you don't, bring your don't, own hot sauce. Don't, don't keep condiments. You know, look at the expression dates. I mean, you know, in kitchens, honestly, those need to probably be re- reevaluated. Yearly. Uh, I at mean, least every quarter. I mean, at least every spring. Every spring you should yeah. be l- yeah. looking at everything. And that goes for also your... Uh, inventory your plates and tupperware if you can't find <laughs> bottoms and tops that fit yeah throw them out oh people. my god i got an avalanche and the, the cool whip Look. containers the parquet butter containers i was at a consultation today and I, she had a stack i was like you can get rid of those you don't need to pay the box and the storage and the moving <laughs> expense to pack those bo- rubber yeah, made container i mean that's the, so silly you know the, the cool, cool whip containers yeah, yeah. so so in, inventory those things get, get get rid of things you're not using the, you know the old you know wooden the plastic avalanche you open yeah. the cupboard and <laughs> <laughs> are those are those you gotta jam it all back in those uh that silicone spatula that you left on the stove and melted or <laughs> yeah. yeah. the, the wood one that you left on the grill and it yeah, got you know burn on one side. so get, get rid of those it's so refreshing yeah. to, to shed those things make a nice list of things you want to replace and yeah. then and then take the time and get some metal ones go 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 have a a fun shopping day yeah you know go to your world market or your pottery barns and go get some yeah go get some fresh stuff Mm -hmm. go get some new stuff because i'll tell you what that that 10 year old spatula you know it served its purpose and yeah you get your money's worth out of it yeah i mean it's 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 time to like get all red from all the spaghetti sauce it's it's time (laughs) it's time to to reinvent your your kitchen it's yeah. time to reinvent your your bathroom. You know those yeah. old jars of lotion that you'll oh, never use. Yes. Just I mean, just just purge that stuff. Yeah. That's, well, and if you, know. you are starting, to, if thinking about selling, you know those are things that I come in and tell you anyway. You know, you buy a lipstick or you buy a bottle, you know, body wash or lotion or whatever, and you don't like the scent or <laughs> get stuff in the back. So to close with the show, I'll, we're going to make an announcement. Yes. This year, we're looking for nominees. We want to know which house has 
a combination, okay? Because I think there's going to be a couple divisions. We want the most sustainable yard. This is one that this is somebody who has native plants, who has, uh, for instance, like uh, coquina or shell or rock, and has done like a complete zero scaping. We were zero scaping. That was the yeah, word I was looking for. Yeah, X E R I. Not to be confused with zero, mm-hmm. Z E R O. So zero scaping is a use of uh, natives and also the use of uh, rock and 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 uh, alternative decorating I, I guess I could say uh, but di- different materials so instead of just a f- pure lawn green lawn yard uh, which is of course very popular uh, it's not as sustainable it's not lagoon friendly because you have to fertilize go ahead and it. hydrate it with fresh water yeah. you have to fertilize it and you have to put or, you know the herbicides anyway you have to add all of these things which are not r- good for the lagoon it's not good good at all and if you could replace it with rock and sand and you mean boulders and, and we all know some of these really cool properties we, we've seen them as uh, you know in our neighborhoods and we're thinking man that's that looks like it's very low maintenance yes it is you know no, yep. no lawn company uh, but you get a native plant expert to come in there, and if you plant natives, you'll see butterflies and and all these other uh, insects, you know, coming in and and uh, because again, you're 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 planting, you're giving their habitat back. So anyway, it's 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 really good idea. Uh, but we're also looking for not only the the best uh, lagoon friendly lawn, but also we re- want to reward the best landscape. And and this could be because of you know the, the shrubbery or whatever else. If if you think it looks like a beautiful lawn. Let us know because we want to recognize those people in our community and give them a nice award and and recognize them with a certificate and a gift card. So if you think that you have a lawn that is uh, worthy of a nomination, please get in touch with us. And if you think, uh, you know, you can always nominate a neighbor or anybody else, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be your own lawn. So if you if you'd like to participate we'd love to have you guys in there and that's that's going to be one of the little ways we get back this year um we think it's uh it's time to go ahead and and have the space coast real estate show do more than just flap our gums at you and and uh and 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 help you with with real estate specific stuff we really want to be more engaging in the community and i think this would be, be a, a fun little initiative to to get started most definitely and yeah. then we'll feature you feature you on the podcast and we'll we'll show a picture of the uh, the lawns and maybe the competitors maybe i'll put them on the screen and then uh we'll have you guys also vote, vote. Yeah. so you yeah. know we got like a um uh, a judges Maybe you know. we can hear from the home over what it took yeah. to get right. that done. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll have the judge, professional the judges, uh, you know, our, ourselves as judges, and but we'll also have the people's choice. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, anyway, that's a, a new initiative, and we hope uh, you guys reach out and uh, and. And how it, can they? How can they nominate? Just so I would say in? we have a uh, Facebook page. If you just want to message us there, or. Honestly, if it's if it's if, if that's too hard, not everybody has Facebook. Just give me a text three two one eight seven seven eight seven three seven. Just to leave a name and an address that you think you know uh, we need to go check out, and I will I will go by there. I will drive by there. We'll take some pictures. I'll yep. show my co-hosts, and uh, and and then we'll show you guys you know on one of our episodes. Again, it's going to be once a month, so we'll collect you know all the nominees probably like up to like six you know but uh in all honesty if it's like just three or four we'll choose from you know from those you know little bits that we receive and then award presentation a yeah we're gonna do award presentation we'll, all right they're gonna have a nice little uh a yard sign that that lets all their neighbors know that they won a yard of the month by the space ghost real estate show nice yeah so that's new for twenty two. Yeah, that's, cool. that's excellent. I think it's exciting. Me too. You know, and we could give away some some fun things because I know Move Mortgage. You guys have yeah. some little swag bag. I know. Oh, yeah, we got. You stuff. know, we, we give away some. Uh, uh, you know, uh, other items, perhaps. You know, some some gift cards from from other sponsors. So anyway, I think it's going to be a nice treat, and it's going to it's going to be worth that recognition. So, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward. That to sounds it. fun. Yeah. So any other closing remarks? I think that's. Uh, I think that concludes. I think that's good. Yeah. Looking Twen- forward to a new year. Twenty twenty two. Here we are. Yeah, man. Uh, lots of exciting stuff. We're gonna keep you guys, uh, of course, up to date with all the, the the findings. We're gonna see exactly where where lending decides to go. Yep. And of course, uh, you know the the market, uh, which again, there's lots of. There's lots of indicators suggesting a couple things, but we just have no idea. Nothing's so for sure. There's no crystal ball in this business. So nope. as much as people want to say, like, do, do I sell or buy or, or sell or buy? It's really like, if you need if you need to sell, 
sell. If you if you need to buy, buy. Yeah. Because at any given market, you can never tell if 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 the future is is going to be better or worse. So uh, do it right. do it today because you need to. Don't don't try to wait thinking the market's going to go one way or another because a house is a building, a home is a feeling. Yeah. Your <laughs> home is out there. That that that. <laughs> That is, that is great, John. Well, thank and you. staging it, makes it, it, a house feel like a home. That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, r- real quick, where can, where can people find you? Oh, John Maselli, uh, Movement Mortgage, Beachside, Indy Atlantic, uh, loanappliapproved.com, or you can give me a call anytime on my cell phone, 321-266-0703. There you go. Michelle? Inspiring Home Staging and Redesign, 321-806-6543, or our website, Inspiring Home Staging. Um, sorry, inspiringhomes321.com um, or our Facebook page, Inspiring Homes 321. Very good. Jesse Hall, EXP Realty, give me a call, 321 877 8737 for all of your real estate needs or visit 321buysellinvest.com. And uh, thanks again so much for tuning into the Space Coast Real Estate Show. Thanks, Jesse. Until next time, thanks. we'll see you You're guys. The man.